Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Well, in this unit, Unit 7, we're going to be studying clouds and rain. Clouds and rain, we can see different pictures of clouds and rain and the intermediate stage between clouds and rain. In this unit, you will discover the water cycle. So remember in Unit 4, we were talking about the human life cycle. Well, many things go through a cycle. They move from one place to another, or they grow or change, and the cycle is repeated. So that's what we're talking about now. But now we're focusing on water. What is the water cycle? Let's take a look. What, first of all, what is a cycle? A cycle is a series of events being repeated many times. As we can see, if we're talking about uh, water, this is a very, looks like a very complicated diagram. But basically, we can start off with the ocean, right? It gets warm, the water moves up into the atmosphere, it cools down, it comes down as rain, it goes underground, and back into the ocean. A cycle is a process or a series of events that repeats over and over again. It's being repeated many times. Just like the human life cycle, somebody goes from infant to adult, adults have babies, and the cycle starts again. These events happen over and over. They're repeated many times, a series of events. That's what a cycle is. Okay, let's look at one stage or one step of the water cycle, and we're talking about a cloud. A cloud is many drops of water, many drops of water that are together in the sky. So water rises up into the sky, they get together and they form clouds, and that's what a cloud is. When we look at a cloud, we're not looking at air, this is actually water. There's many little drops of water, but they're very light, and there's not so many of them, there's enough of them to make it look different, but in this cloud there is water. If the cloud gets heavy, a lot of water gets together, that rain will fall, okay? Rain will fall from a cloud. Now, how do clouds form into the sky? Well, water has to evaporate, evaporate. <laughs> Poor kid, where did all the water go, right? He wants to go swimming, but all the water's gone. Where did it go? It evaporated, evaporate. Evaporate means to change from water to water vapor. So imagine this pool used to be filled with water, but over time, looks like it's been there for a long time, the, I wouldn't go swimming here anyway because it's very old and, and uh, uh, broken. But anyway, the water has evaporated. The water has changed from water, and we could say from water, liquid water, from a liquid form. It's changed from liquid. This water here used to be liquid water to water vapor. Vapor is a stage between liquid and gas, okay? So when the water gets hot, when the sun beats down, the water changes from liquid to a gas, from water vapor, it rises into the sky and it forms that cloud that we saw, that we just saw on the previous slide. So evaporate means to change from water, liquid water, to water vapor, okay? Okay, so our next word is to condense. Let's take a look at the picture here. I want you to focus in on this red circle. Do you see the water drops on the leaf? These water drops have condensed. So before we just talked about evaporate. Evaporate is when the liquid water heats up. It expands. It moves away from each other, right? They expand into the air. That's evaporation. But now the opposite thing is happening. It's condensing. So if you see these drops on the leaf, right, it doesn't have to rain, really, for this to happen. Imagine in the cool morning, right, before it becomes day, it's very cold at night. The water, because of the temperature is very cold, the water drops in the air will get together. If you go out in the morning, you might say, wow, the ground's wet. The leaves of the trees are wet. The leaves on the grass are wet. It didn't rain last night. Why is it wet? because the water in the air condensed, came together. Condensed means to change from water vapor, water vapor in the air, to water drops. And these water drops fall onto the ground, on the grass, on the leaves. 
And so even in the morning, if it didn't rain, you will find drops of water like we can see here in the picture. So condense and evaporate are opposites. Evaporate means to spread out, spread away from each other. Condense means to come together, gather, okay? And especially when we're talking about water and the stages of the water cycle. Now, we've talked about water vapor a little bit already. If you take a look at this picture, we can see a lake, uh, a body of water here. We can also see, it looks like a small cloud, a strange cloud above the water. Well, clouds are basically water vapor. Water vapor is the water that goes up into the air as a gas. Here it's liquid. In the sky it's cloud. Well, from a liquid form, it begins to evaporate. Looks like it should be very hot in this picture. Let's take a look at the video to see a better picture. So what we can see here is the lake here. Also looks like it could be a swimming pool around the edges, but it's very warm water. And because it's warm, that temperature is making the water evaporate. It's changing the liquid water into a water vapor, and the water vapor is spreading out. The liquid, it's come together, right? But evaporate, it starts to go apart. It starts to spread out, and it becomes a gas. And this is what's happening. <clears throat> so this water vapor will rise up into the air, it will go into the sky, and it will condense a little bit and form clouds. And that's where uh, we can see clouds or water vapor in the sky. Those are clouds. Okay, a drop. A drop is a small amount of water, a very small amount of water. Of course, when those clouds get together, if the water in those clouds get together a lot, they become heavier and they fall as single drops. So, of course, we have the word raindrop. Rain drop. So, a drop of rain is a raindrop. Uh, and you can see a very good picture. This is a small amount of water. It's a drop. It's a drop of water. Now, this may not be a raindrop because if you pour water into it, the water will, you know, bounce back up. So that's not a raindrop. That's just a drop of water. But when water falls from the sky, from the clouds, then that is a raindrop. Now, here we have the water cycle. We have a diagram. This is a good chart here. We'll start down here with the first stage of the water cycle. As the sun warms water, so the sun is warming the water in the lake or the pond or the ocean. The sun is beating down, it's getting hotter and hotter. So as the sun warms water, makes the water warmer, some water, not all the water, but some water at the surface, some water turns into water vapor. We talked about that gas stage. Water vapor goes up into the air. We can see it, it's rising up into the air because it's getting hot down here. So it turns into water vapor and water vapor spreads out. It rises up into the air. It starts to go up into the air. In the second stage, as water vapor cools in the sky, because of course it's very hot down here near the ground, right? But as water goes up, as you go higher in elevation, as you go higher away from the ground, it becomes cooler. It's cooler up here than it is down here. So water vapor rises up into the sky, it cools down, it becomes cooler. So it changes into tiny water drops, tiny little drops, very small water drops. The drops form, create, make, the drops form clouds. And this is how clouds are made, how clouds are created. Because those tiny drops of water get together because it's getting cooler and they form clouds. That's the second stage in our diagram. The third stage, when the water drops get bigger and bigger because it's getting cooler and cooler. So what's happening? Those water drops are condensing. They're condensing together now. They're coming back together. They fall as rain or snow because they get heavy. They're too heavy to stay in the air, so they have to drop back down to earth. Now, if it's warm, it will fall down as rain, but if it's cold, it will fall down as snow. In any case, it will come back down to the ground. What happens? It gets down to the ground, it gets on the ground, it will flow down into another lake, a pond, or ocean, and the cycle will start again. And that's why we call it a cycle, because it's a series of events that repeat again and again.
Okay, so that's a very good diagram of our water cycle. We have three steps in this diagram. <clears throat> okay, let's do the exercise. Let's match the words with their definition. The words are cycle, drop, condense, water vapor, cloud, and evaporate. Let's take a look at the definitions. The first one, a series of events being repeated many times, again and again. A series of re events being repeated again and again many times. What is that? What did we just look at? We looked at a diagram of the water cycle. So a cycle is a series of events, several events in a series, first, second, third, that happen again and again. Number two, a small amount of water. Remember, the water vapor starts to come up, it goes into the sky, it gets cooler, so the water comes back together and makes small amounts of water in the sky. What do we call those? We call those drops or a drop. A small amount of water is a drop, a drop of water. Number three, the many drops of water together in the sky. Remember, as that water rises up in the sky, it gets cooler, so that water condenses and gets together in the sky. They form, what do they form? They form clouds. They make clouds in the sky. Clouds are, are very interesting to look at sometimes. Some clouds are very white, right? Some clouds are dark or gray. Of course, if it's white, there's not a lot of water in that cloud. If it's a gray cloud, there's more water. If it's a black cloud, there's a lot of water in that cloud. It's probably about to fall down as rain. Number four, to change from water to water vapor. Remember that was in our first step in the water cycle. The water is down on the ground in a lake, in a pond, in an ocean, or in a river. It's beginning to change from liquid to water vapor. So heat, the sunlight, will warm that water up and that water will start to form water vapor. What do we call that process? We say that process is to evaporate, to evaporate. So evaporate means to change from water to water vapor. Remember, the water is spreading out from a liquid, it's a dense material, to not so dense, in the air, becoming gas. So it's spreading out, it's evaporating. Five, to change from water vapor to water drops. So now the opposite is happening from evaporate. Now they're not spreading out, they're coming together, right? Because it's getting cooler. So to change from water vapor to water drops coming together, what do we call that? We say to condense, to condense. That's that action that's happening, to condense. Number six, the water that goes up into the air as a gas. So we've talked about that already in one of our uh, definitions, right? The water that goes up in the air is a gas. It's not liquid anymore. It changes into a gas and it starts to go up in the air. We call that, of course, water vapor. We saw that before in definition number four. Okay, let's take a look at our chart here. We can tell the weather by looking at clouds. Remember I talked about the clouds? I said if you see a white cloud, you see a gray cloud, or you see a black cloud. Well, this is a great chart to talk about that. Let's take a look. Thin and feathery clouds. Thin and feathery means, you know, they're not round. They're feathery. They're kind of long and they have many uh, shoots off of them. These are long and feathery, thin and feathery clouds. Very thin, but they're feathery. This is a sign of good weather. So in other words, it's not going to turn into bad weather. It means the weather is going to stay the same. It's not going to rain, it's not going to snow. It's, it'll be a little cloudy, but there'll be a lot of sun too. So thin and feathery clouds are a sign of good weather. Let's take a look at a video here. Here we see the blue sky. We see thin and feathery clouds. What's going on here is the water vapor, there's not a lot of water vapor in the sky, just a little bit. And we can see it passing along. The clouds look very thin. They're kind of feathery. They're not very solid. Uh, they just kind of, you know, long and feathery. They're not very um, uh, thick. They're not very uh, strong, it seems like. And they're very white as well. They're very white in color. Those are uh, thin and feathery clouds. 
Another type of cloud, we see this, this is very impressive by the way, this is very beautiful, right? Puffy, puffy, like uh, cotton candy or uh, certain types of fabric. Your, your teddy bear is puffy, right? Puffy, ha having the shape and white clouds, they're white but they're also gray underneath, right? So we're changing from very white to a little bit darker color underneath. They're very white where the sun hits them, but underneath they're a little bit darker. This is also a sign of good weather, okay? So we still have a good weather in this case. Now, it could change, right? But it's a sign of good weather. These are puffy and white clouds. Let's take a look at the video. These are puffy and white clouds moving. As I said, they're very interesting to watch. You could watch them for a long time because the shape, shapes are changing all the time. Look at this cloud growing here. They're very puffy and they're white, but underneath looks like trouble. Looks like they're gray underneath. Here we have low and gray clouds, even black on the bottoms, right? If they're low and they're gray, that's a sign of stormy weather. So even though the sun is shining, we can see the sunlight on many buildings, there's also a lot of uh, dark clouds here, a lot of dark and, and they're low in the, uh, in the atmosphere. So that is a sign of stormy weather, that it will probably rain or snow soon. Let's take a look at a video of that. Wow, look at that. That's a very dark cloud. And you see how it's changing there. It's almost black down in here, very gray on this side. And of course, there's a lot of clouds moving. The wind is moving around here. This water vapor is condensing. It's getting heavier and heavier. So that water is gonna need to fall from the sky as these clouds get together and the water vapor uh, condenses it's going to need to fall from the sky as rain or snow. So it's actually the looking at clouds and classifying clouds is kind of a very old uh, science and it's occupied science for a lot of uh, many decades. And there is now a system for looking at different clouds, but you have to learn the, the specific names, those kind of difficult names. But we broke them down into uh, uh, thin and featherly, puffy and white, and also uh, low and gray. Those are three main types of cloud systems we can look at. So let's take a look at these pictures. We just learned about different types of clouds, different colors of clouds. Which pictures show signs of good weather and bad weather? It's important to be able to look up into the sky and say, hmm, I think it's going to rain. If you look at the clouds, you'll be able to do that. So let's take a look at these pictures. In the first picture, what do we see? We see thin and featherly clouds. What is that a sign of? Do you remember? If it's a sign of good weather, we should circle the picture. So is this a sign of good weather? You bet. It is a sign of good weather. Uh, thin and featherly clouds is a sign of good weather. In the second picture, what do you think here? What are these clouds? How do we describe these clouds? They're kind of low and they're dark. Right, so low and dark or gray clouds, is that a sign of good weather? No, that is not good weather, so we don't circle this one. How about this one? These are puffy, puffy and white clouds, especially on the top. Is that a sign of good weather? We just learned that? Yes, we learned that uh, these types of clouds, puffy and white clouds, are a sign of good weather. Okay, let's move on then. We have our true false questions. Number one, water vapor is the water that goes up into the air as a gas. It's a vapor, water, vapor. It's changing from liquid to gas. Is that true? Yes, that is true. That's exactly what water vapor is. It is evaporating and it is turning from uh, liquid water to gaseous water, to water uh, that is a gas. That's water vapor. Number two, evaporate means to change from water vapor to water. Well, think about that. Water vapor, the water is far apart. It's spreading out. That's water vapor. Liquid water is when the water comes together. So if it's coming together, do we say that it's evaporating? No, we don't. That's false, right? We have to change evaporate to condense. Condense. Remember, evaporate and condense are opposites. So condense means to change from water vapor to water. That would be true. But we have to change the sentence so it's false. Okay. And number three, we have the opposite. Condense means 
to change from water to water vapor. See, they switched it around here to try to confuse you. From water to water vapor. So we have water that's changing to water vapor. Is, that, is this condensing? No, this is evaporating. So again, we would have to change this sentence to use the opposite, evaporate. Evaporate means to change from water to water vapor. That would be true, but we have to change the sentence. So this sentence is false. Okay, so you see how they tried to change, uh, trick you with condense and evaporate. Just remember, condense and evaporate are different. Evaporate means to spread out from a liquid to a gas. The, the water is spreading out. Condense means from a gas changing into a liquid. It's coming together. Evaporate, spreading out. Condense, coming together. Okay. Well, that wraps it up for this part. Let's take a short break, and we'll come back and do the reading section. Okay, let's go over the reading section here. We have our title sentence, or our topic sentence, water moves from place to place. Now, that's just kind of describing what water does. When we think about that, water moves from one place to another place. If we think about what we've just learned about water, we can see that's true. Water is in a lake or ocean to begin with, then it moves up into the air, becomes clouds, and then it moves back down to the ground. It moves from place to place. Water moves from the earth to the air and back again. This is called the water cycle. A cycle because and back again. It repeats. It goes from the ground to the air, back down to the ground, then to the ground to the air, and back down. It's a cycle. It moves around and around. It repeats many times. Let's talk about that process. What happens? The sun makes the water warm. This is the first stage in the process. So the sun is making the water warm. Then water evaporates. So because it's becoming warm, it evaporates. It spreads out and it becomes, it used to be liquid water, but now it's becoming water vapor. So the water evaporates or changes into water vapor. It starts to rise in the sky. We cannot see water vapor. Well, we can at the beginning. We can see the kind of the cloudy form as it's coming off the water. We can also see water vapor in the sky. It is clouds. But in between, we don't really see water vapor. There is water vapor in the air around me right now. There is a, a water. I can't see it. I can't feel it. It's not that hot and humid in here. Sometimes on a summer day, though, you can feel the water vapor on your skin. It's very hot and you start to sweat or you move around. It's very sticky. That is water vapor in the air. Usually you can't see it. Sometimes you can. Water vapor goes up into the air. Water vapor cools in the sky. So we're talking about the different steps. So first of all, it evaporates. And then the second step, it goes up into the air and it cools down. It cools in the sky. Then what happens to it? Do you know? Do you remember? Of course, then the water vapor condenses. It comes back together. It evaporated. It's spread out in the sky. It condenses. It comes back together or changes into tiny water drops. You can see tiny water drops, but before that you can't really see the, the water in the air. Many drops of water form clouds. So when they come back together, when they're little tiny drops of water in the air, those are clouds. Water drops in the clouds get bigger and bigger, especially if it gets cooler and cooler those water drops will get bigger and bigger because they are continuing to condense. They are continuing to come together. So they get bigger and bigger. Those little drops grow in size. What happens when they grow in size? Okay, what happens? They fall back to the earth as rain or snow. So those drops are getting heavier and heavier, so they have to fall back to the earth. They can't stay in the air. They're too heavy. They fall back to the earth as rain or as snow, depending on how warm or cold it is. If it's warm, it will fall down as rain. If it's cold, it will fall down as snow. So the rain or snow falls into rivers, lakes, and oceans, back down to the ground. Now it's back in the ground, right? What happens? The water cycle continues. So the cycle continues. It repeats itself. Repeats 
again and again. It repeats. So it falls back down to the ground, the sun will warm it up, and it'll start the cycle, a new cycle that continues and repeats again and again. So it's very interesting to look at water. Water moves from place to place, and that is part of the water cycle. Okay, let's take a look at our reading skill chart. Cause and effect. Because as we see, water moves from place to place, but each stage, when water moves from one place to another, there has to be a cause for that effect. When water moves from a lake to water vapor, that's the effect, but what makes that happen? What causes that? We can take a look at this subject and find out what are the causes and the effect. Uh, when we're talking about the water cycle, the cause is the thing that creates a change. The effect is the change. Effect is change, cause is the reason for that change. So cause can be reason. What is the reason for something? Effect is the change. Whoops, change. So when we talk about cause and effect, we're really talking about reason for change. Why does something change? What is the reason? What is the cause? What is the change? What is the effect? Let's take a look. The sun makes water warm. That's the reason. Because the sun is making the water warm, water does what? What's the effect? We should choose from one of these down here. Snow, rain, clouds, evaporates, or condenses. What does water do? We're looking for a verb. Snow, rain, clouds, those are nouns. Evaporates, condenses, those are our two verbs. We should choose one of these two. So, water does what? The sun makes water warm. Water gets warm, it starts to spread out. It evaporates, right? So our answer there is evaporates. Water evaporates. Because the sun makes the water warm, water evaporates. That's the change. The next cause, water vapor cools in the sky, right? So the water goes up in the sky, it becomes cool. That's the reason. Because it becomes cool, the water vapor does what? We're looking for another verb. Our only other verb left is condenses. Water vapor condenses. Many drops of water form what? Snow, rain, or clouds? Well, first they form clouds. So the first thing is that they form clouds. These are the changes. This is the reason. Because it gets cool, they condense and form clouds. In the third one, we have water drops get bigger and bigger. So water drops are getting bigger and bigger. That's the reason, right? That's the cause. What happens? What's the change? They fall back to the earth as rain or snow. Of course, you could switch these around. You could say they fall back to the earth as snow or rain. Doesn't matter because they fall back to the earth as one or the other depending on whether it's warm or cold. So they fall back to the earth as rain or as snow. So here we see the reasons for something happening. We see the changes, the, uh, the effects of what happens because of these reasons. Because of this, this happens, okay? Cause and effect. Okay, let's take a look at the comprehension questions. Number one, the sun warms water. And next, the water does what? So first, the sun is warming the water, making it hotter. So what happens to the water? Does it rain? Does it evaporate or does it cycle, right? We're looking for a verb. Cycle is a noun, so we can cross that off. That's not a verb. Rain is a verb. Evaporate is a verb. But which one? The sun warms water, so the water rains, but the water's in the ocean already, right? It's in the lake already. It doesn't rain inside the lake. That's silly. What happens is the water gets hot and it evaporates. It spreads out, doesn't it? It spreads out. It evaporates. Number two, rain or snow falls into what? A, B, or C. Rain or snow falls into the earth as vapor. It falls into the earth as a gas. Oh, that's silly, right? It doesn't do that. So that is not correct. A is not correct. Rain or snow falls into lakes and rivers. Oh yeah, okay, it goes back down into the body of water. It falls into lakes and rivers. It falls into clouds in the sun. <laughs> That's kind of silly, right? Uh, rain and snow falls up into the sky, goes to the sun. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? That would be very silly. So that obviously is incorrect. Also, our right answer is B, lakes and rivers.
Okay, number three. The water cycle is when water does what? And remember, we're talking about the whole water cycle here. The entire water cycle is when water does what? A, moves from the earth to the sun. Does water move from the earth all the way to the sun? That's kind of crazy, isn't it? That would be very far that the water would have to go. It probably wouldn't come back from the sun. It goes out into outer space, right? So A is not correct. That's kind of silly. The water cycle is when water condenses and goes up into the air. Does water, con when it condenses, does it go up into the air? When it, when it condenses, it gets together and it falls from the air down to the ground, right? So that's not correct. That doesn't make sense. So, of course, our answer is C, is when water moves from place to place. It moves from oceans and lakes into the air and then back down to the ground, flows back into waters, into uh, rivers, into lakes and oceans, and then starts to cycle again. And that's the cycle. Water is moving from place to place. Number four, after water is warmed by the sun, so the sun is warming the water, what can happen to it? What is possible? What might happen? What can it do? A, it can condense and then fall as rain. So when water becomes warm, does it condense? Does it get together and fall as rain? No, the opposite happens. It evaporates and goes up into the air. So that's not correct. B, becomes water vapor in lakes and oceans. Well, that is our correct answer because it's warmed by the sun. As I said, it evaporates. It evaporates means it changes from liquid water. It becomes water vapor above lakes and oceans and starts to go into the air. So that's our answer. Let's take a look at C for practice. It condense water. It can condense, then evaporate, and then fall as snow. Well, that's just all mixed up, isn't it? First of all, it won't condense. We saw that before in number A. Water does not condense when it becomes warm. Water condenses when it becomes cool. So this is incorrect. Okay, let's move on to our final si slide. As we can see, the water cycle. We have three steps to the water cycle. And remember, these steps keep going and going. So they form a cycle. What happens in the first stage? Well, this is very long, isn't it? In the first stage, the water is in a lake or a stream. The sun will warm it up. Let's take a look. As the sun warms water, some water turns into water vapor. So the water vapor starts to form above lakes and oceans and rivers. Water vapor then goes up into the air, especially with the heat the water will go up in the air. It's evaporating. It's moving out and upward. Now in the second step, what is the second step? Is the second step over here, what's going on? Let's take a look. As water vapor cools in the sky, as the water vapor comes on up and cools down, it changes into tiny water drops. What is the process? We say it is starting to condense. It condenses. These uh, drops form clouds. So they condense a little bit and they start to form clouds. Now what happens? When the water drops get bigger and bigger, they continue to condense, right? They continue to condense. They get bigger and bigger. They get heavier and heavier. They fall as rain or snow. So then they become to fall because they're too heavy. They can't stay in the air. It's too heavy to stay up there. So they begin to fall. They fall as rain or as snow, depending on how warm or cold it is. What is the temperature? So if the temperature is cold, it'll fall as snow. If the temperature is warm, it will fall as rain. So very interesting uh, uh, lesson here. Clouds and rain form part of the water cycle. We've talked about evaporation, when water spreads out and forms water vapor, comes up into the air. We've talked about to condense when water gets cool and uh, gathers together and falls from the sky. These are all parts of the water cycle. And there are many different stages to the water cycle. Remember, it happens again and again. It's going on right now, right? Somewhere in the world it's raining. Somewhere in the world it's hot and water vapor is being formed. Uh, so this cycle is going on all around us all the time. Water is constantly moving from place to place and that is the water cycle. Okay, well this is a very interesting topic. Hope you've learned a lot. 
We'll see you guys next time. Take care.